we analyze your handwriting and we can find out more than 128 things about you and this 128 information is classified into five concrete things for me change is highly sacred thing it's a very very divine approach towards you fixing something which is already part of your existence so what comes before changing is identification how you connect with people how you remember certain incidences so i, I can go on and surprise people by talking about their sleeping pattern I can talk about uh, how they uh, you know, approach love. Welcome everyone for the, another episode of this special interview with someone, a man who is on a mission to make one million people fall in love with writing and support them forging their future using the power of the pen. And he is none other than Imran Beg. So Imran, I'm so grateful that we have you here and you have You've taken your precious time from your busy schedules. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, pleasure is mine. Thank you, Sagar, for having me here. And uh, hello, everybody. Uh, namaste. Uh, you know, good day. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in and uh, taking some time and watching this uh, beautiful uh, conversation between me and Sagar. Looking forward to adding value. So, Imran, like you call yourself as a penmanship influencer. So, what do you exactly mean by that? If you can just okay, uh, give a light, a light on that. If you can just also share like what exactly inspired you to get into this journey. Please. All right. Uh, you know, you can call me a handwriting expert, uh, a graphologist or a master practitioner of graphology or a signature expert. But I, I didn't want it to use any of this fancy uh, designation because my mission was plain, simple and clear. I just wanted people to get back to writing. So I wanted to, you know, influence people talking about the importance of writing. See, handwriting itself is a very powerful, uh, you know, habit and activity by itself. And graphology is something which is connected to handwriting. So more than talking about the analysis aspects of it or development aspects of it, I basically wanted to focus how I can make people come back to writing. Because in this digital world, handwriting is something which has already faded away. And thanks to the pandemic, you now we got more used to the digital you know, phenomena, uh, digital space, and uh, whatever was left also is gone. But now we realize also, I and mean, I'm sure all the parents out there also realize that during the pandemic, how much it impacted the children. Now they went back to the school, they have to write the exams now, they have to make notes now, and what are the changes and you know difficulties they're experiencing. And also as adults, what, why it's so important handwriting is because for me, my understanding, my discovery is that this science of writing is a beautiful thing between your mind and your body. And most of us are experiencing challenges in our life, difficulties in our life, attracting diseases to our bodies because we are not in sync with the mind and the body. Now, if you're sitting there and wondering, Imran, uh, what do you mean by the sync between mind and the body? It's simple. Your mind says, tomorrow morning, I want to start exercise. Body says, no, throw a rest. Kar lete. Your mind says, you know, tomorrow I'm going to make 21 videos. I'll set my curriculum and everything. But the body says, you know, bahut kar liya aaj, kal so can you say that you're not in alignment? And this conflict is something which actually brings and manifests into diseases, uh, psychosomatic challenges. And that's why you're not being able to be productive. So for me, handwriting is basically a beautiful thing between the mind and the body. And that's why I call myself as a penmanship influencer because I come uh, with a background of making people come back to writing. I tell them about the science behind choosing the right pen. How do you sit? Uh, what are the exercises you can do to bring in more flexibility in your hand so that you can write more effortlessly? So I talk to adults, I talk to children, I talk to parents, I talk to teachers, I talk to entrepreneurs, I talk to business owners. I talk to everyone because I want them to start their morning with writing something. It could be affirmations. It could be about five things they want to accomplish today, or it could be, you know, uh, you know, any spiritual thing which you want to write. So, Imran, like, uh, when was that moment, when, which year that you decided, okay, I am going to uh, help these people to actually work on it? Yeah. Uh, I was pretty young when I started uh, handwriting uh, analysis. Uh, I was pretty good at it. And uh, I used to use handwriting analysis as a way of uh, showing off people what I can do and I know how good I am and how I can read people just by looking at the handwriting. But there was a moment in my life where I realized what I have is a tool, not just about analyzing people around me, but also it could become a way of life for people. They could actually understand themselves because uh, one of my biggest enlightenment is 
we know everything about everything sagar you know we know everything you know if i tell you about uh, any specific diet people have more information about diet than what a person and expert can actually talk about dieting you know people when i talk about health when i talk about exercises you will tell me more insight than a expert could do you know i talk about investment i talk about money i talk about property i talk about politics i talk about religion everybody knows more than what you know but the problem right now what i realize is that we know everything about everything but we don't know a lot about our own self so the education of self is missing and that's why no wonder people make this statements imran i don't know why i get so angry you know imran when i get angry i don't know why i say all the things i say and later on i realize the impact of it imran i don't know why i actually you know take such decisions where i end up attracting people like this in my life so can you see that we don't have the education which is in the need right now the education of your own self and that's why i went on to educating people saying that don't look at handwriting analysis as a tool to identify others in your life let's start applying the science on your own self and find out who you really are so when i say who you really are it's not just about identifying your personality but identifying what is your thinking pattern so when i say thinking pattern uh, the pattern is basically you know it talks four important things one what is your decision making process number two how do you learn anything what is your process of learning anything number 3 how you process any information which is coming to you or you which you reading which you understanding and number 4 is what are your abilities and how do you react how do you respond so people don't have this basic understanding of themselves you know they go with the flow sometimes the heart takes over when it comes to taking decisions sometimes it's men uh, mind which is too logical about it and i come across people you know having all these challenges and that's why they're not able to be productive and more importantly i am sure all the coaches and trainers who are sitting there and watching this uh, uh you know the idea is we don't have mastery over our mind and that's why same system same processes same teacher everything is the same but can you see that every one of us create different results or yes. different yes system is the same system is process same. is the same yeah zoom topic because, is same same but everything yeah. is about why is different for you know why because you are unique you are special and you are a masterpiece you need to understand your mindset before winning the game outside of you you need to win the game here and our biggest asset in our life is our mind and most of us don't invest time in understanding your mindset so for me handwriting analysis is a pure tool which is you know not influenced by anything else it has nothing to do but other than showing you the mirror which is what it is it is So my understanding about the science changed when I realized the power about self education and that is the most sacred education anybody can have amazing Imran now when it comes to like you discovered okay this is something uh, need of the hour in the in the market so do you face any challenges when it comes to like selling the thing because a lot of coaches uh, like they are good at their like their skill set but when it comes to selling the things so what was the first impression like okay going out and selling this in, as a product true Uh, as anybody else you will i also face the same challenges well. for me because i mean in niche way i have to first educate people about what exactly i do because you know i have to introduce myself about you know when when you talk about investment when you talk about health when you talk about you know technology digitizing people know a little background of it i'm coming from a domain where people don't know much about it so i had to first educate people and bring in awareness and then i had to sell but in the process one of the things which i beautifully got present to is that sagar I realize if you become what you are selling people will buy from you without you selling let me say this wow. again if you become what you are selling people will buy from you without you selling you know let me give an example you know all of us who are health coaches you need to show people that how healthy you are what is the lifestyle which you have created for yourself what is the ecosystem you have in your home how your family and everybody is influenced by the way you are and when you present that to the world and for the people it becomes doable right and similarly when i talked about handwriting analysis i said about having an ex- ex- you know having a personality wherein people in your presence feel calm and comfortable you know let's think about this you know one of the reasons i tell people to learn the science is that can you please focus on developing your own personality in such a way that not only you but people around you should feel calm and comfortable in your presence 
and that was like a aha moment and that's what actually happened when i people see that when they come to my ecosystem and they see me when they actually undergo training with me they realize yes mran you know you sell very calm you know the way you connect with people is very calm and the way people feel in your presence is different so i realized yeah so what i'm propagating i'm also becoming that and people see that because they are the people are natural analyst i say you know we all are trained yes. hand analyst people are natural analyst unko wo vaccination mil jati hai Yes. Right. You, when you meet people in less than seven seconds, you know. Okay, yeah, acha banda. I have to connect with this guy, or I have to work with this person. I have, you know, I like this place. I like this restaurant. I like this place. You no, know why? Because you constantly get vibrations from the people. So that's what I got present to, and that's why you know I do what I do, and uh, people enjoy, uh, you know, the process and the system. Amazing, Imran. Would you like to share like what was your uh, journey of like understanding yourself throughout this process of like? implementing for yourself in, in that journey so what are the maybe two three things that you would like to share like, this is something change your life uh, would like to put some points in our around it now oh, yeah uh, uh, I, i remember very very uh, you know beautifully there was an incident in my life where uh, i was you know analyzing handwriting and uh, there was one incident where uh, i got a feedback from somebody said imran thank you for analyzing my handwriting because of that you know i was actually contemplating suicide but i changed my mindset towards it because i realized i have so much of potential when you actually analyze my handwriting i realized imran you made me see that okay there's so much of potential there's so much of strength i have and you spoke like always my parents used to talk about me and i realized my parents just did, just did not speak good about me because i'm their daughter but they saw that in me and i i you had right my handwriting also said the same thing and i uh, you know i reinforced that to the uh, lady and that was like a very very huge moment for me then when i realized you know when i analyze people i'm not not just analyzing handwriting i'm actually adding value to people's life i'm supporting people being present to their natural strengths and uh, in that very moment and i i felt so peaceful and divine uh, i realized how the work i'm doing is so divine is because if you can sa- save somebody's life you know if you can add some value to people's life you know forget about all these big things like saving somebody's life right even if you make and make somebody smile i think you're doing divine work and that's why i love what i you uh, know do and this is how i'm excited about this uh, like this is all a true impact like like imran uh, there is nothing more than that saving a life uh, uh, so imran like uh, would you like to share like when you see someone handwriting i think you have analyzed once during a last year yeah, like by just watching my handwriting so how many characteristics that you can actually um grasp from a person by looking at their handwriting uh let me clarify uh, one important thing like uh, when i look into anybody's handwriting it's not the mood which we are analyzing it's not the feeling which we are analyzing it's not the emotion we are analyzing what as a handwriting analyst we do is we identify your trait t r a i t trait a uh, trait is something it's your behavior which has become your identity it's your behavior which has become your identity for example have you not come across people in your life who you know yaar ye bahut baat karta yaar he asks too many questions or right. you know he's you know he has anger just like his dad can you see that your your behavior has become your identity so we analyze your handwriting and we can find out more than 128 things about you and this 128 information is classified into five concrete things one is what is your core base of your personality on which everything is standing number two what are your natural strengths which comes to you effortlessly number three what are your fears and what are your defenses so to counter this fear what are the defenses which you operate for example your anger is a defense mechanism you being sensitive to criticism sensitive to the feedback is a fear because you fear being ridiculed you fear people will say no to you uh, you fear people will find wrong with you so then we also have something called as um, you know your thinking pattern we also find out about your relationship when i say relationship is not about how good husband or a wife you are or how good a uh, sibling you are or a parent you are no a relation is basically about what is your equation with people how much you trust people how much you allow people in your inner circle how much you connect with them and all these aspects so technically this is what we do and by the way handwriting analysis is not just about how people write and it about it's about their personality it's also about how you can change your handwriting and influence your subconscious mind so this process is called grapho therapy grapho means lines therapy means systematically practicing those lines so that it becomes grapho therapy 
is it that graphotherapy and graphology the same or uh, no there are two different things graphology is basically identification analysis decoding and uh, graphotherapy is all about fixing changing fixing okay yeah so that's the remedy part of it a remedy part of it now when you talk about like graphology like how does that graphology impact that human behavior specifically how we can train that subconscious mind with that help of graphology see uh, uh, you know if you go back to the stone age uh, before even we started speaking we started writing you know the writings on the stone uh, on the caves actually gave the insight into what type of animals they used to domesticate what type of food they used to serve what are the fears they had what they used to counteract so can you see that all these things is already there yes yes history yeah. Yeah. so exactly. graphology is basically a study of anything which has a shape size and a you know angle so you can analyze paintings colors structures uh, handwriting scripts so a lot of things are there but as part of graphology handwriting analysis is one core subject okay so that's what we do how basically handwriting analysis can improve the communications and relationship with others so uh for me uh very honestly speaking what comes before change or fixing or correcting anything is understanding what to change most of us don't have this approach you know any time anything you hear for example if somebody talks about a new diet or uh, you know, everybody wants to apply the diet everybody wants to fix uh, how they are eating what they are doing can you see that we immediately jump on to change it no hold on what comes before change because for me change is highly sacred thing it's a very very divine approach towards you fixing something which is already part of your existence so what comes before changing is identification so i proper get use handwriting analysis to identify what exactly is working in your life what requires improvement and what you don't have to change it but just being aware itself brings in a lot of changes so the approach is about that and when we you know as a handwriting analyst our application of uh, this information which we can identify using handwriting analysis is done in multiple ways for example i use handwriting analysis in recruitment so what we do in recruitment is not about finding the right person for the job it's about matching the personality profile with the job profile so i don't want you to become a manager because you have an mba or you have a particular you know understanding about a thing now i really i need to really understand do you really fit the bill so we spend a lot of time with the hrs the head of the organizations in identifying what do you expect out of this person so don't hire people because he has a designation of a manager no what is your definition of a manager do you want this person to inspire people do you want this person to be good with numbers do you want this person to sell do you want this person to manage admin so if you don't have this job profile defined you know anybody you can hire they will definitely be there they will do what is required to be done but they are they doing effortlessly are they doing it naturally that's something which you need to ask that's why attrition rate is so high people join they undergo training only to not work with you can you see that yes number 2 we have recruitment after that we have personality assessment personality profiling and uh, we help people realize their own potential and we also help people in compatibility test and when we talk about compatibility in relationship it's not about finding the right or the wrong partner or you know or the right fit for you it's all about how much you understand each other and how much are you willing to you know coexist with the person by understanding each other how they behave how they decide how they react how they respond so that's where the mature way of looking compatibility is not about choosing the right or the wrong person for yourself and then we also talk about career guidance you know some of the things handwriting analysis which helps you to identify is your natural strengths are you a good speaker or a conversationalist do you have a good fluidity of thoughts are you a great organizer are you good at making uh, you know uh, decisions how do you manage stress how do you manage your communication so if you can realize that this is your natural strength you know if you can develop on that you know you can create a beautiful career out of it so don't become a trainer because you got inspired by looking at somebody you know you can definitely uh, you know include all the skills and i'm sure all the trainers and coaches who are listening to me they will realize that you don't like the selling part but you like the teaching part right yes can you see that idea so you yes. you always, i was talking about that yeah yeah you know you always have a hesitation imran mujhe mujhe log de do main sikha dunga lekin sell nahi aata mujhe and ab sell bhi nahi karna aata and sometimes i hesitate asking people money so can you see that if you need to yes. learn about yourself that what is coming to you naturally 
and focus on it. I'm not going to say that, okay, you need to stop selling and only just start. No, as a trainer, you need to learn and then also upgrade yourself and handwriting analysis can definitely help you to up your skill, be present and release your mental blocks about money, about asking people for your services. All these things is very important. And that's why one of the core things I tell people, you know, forget about relationship, compatibility, career, everything you keep it aside. If you can learn handwriting analysis and focus on one thing, and if you can only change that one thing, life is going to change for you. And that is your self-esteem. How much you value yourself. What is your equation of self-respect and self-confidence? And if you can only improvise this using the power of handwriting analysis, graphotherapy, that itself is going to be a game changer. Because I know people who have low self-esteem are the people who are making tons of money, but they're somewhere not content about what you're in the making. And some of you not even acknowledge yourself. Some of you don't know how to receive compliments. Some of you don't know how to handle objections during the webinar. Some of you don't know how to actually you know, propagate yourself. You know, somewhere you feel, yeah, right, I'm thinking I'm beating my own drums. You know, I, sometimes I feel, you know, I, I'm being too, you know, passive, you know uh, uh, submissive, not assertive. You know, somehow I don't know how to say no to people. Uh, somehow I don't know how to, you know, ask for my own money back. So all these are the challenges which I, I know, I'm sure all the trainers, all the entrepreneurs, yes. even on an individual level, people experience this. And that's what it needs to be fixed. You know, it's not about your webinar selling formula. It's not about your system because we trust in our coach and the coach has given us so much of beautiful insight and system and process. It's like, you, you can't go wrong with that. But what is need to be fixed is your mindset. How is that somebody has the same methodology and process? They're creating, you know, huge success for themselves. And why are you not able to do it? Because you're applying everything, but something there, you need to win the game here. It's like you talk about a lot of different different professions like does that is apply to kids as well as like kids can also improve because they they don't understand this self-esteem all these things how, uh, so how you apply for them oh uh, this is amazing uh kids program is very special to me uh kids program is basically where uh, i'm not a handwriting teacher i know i don't teach uh beautification of handwriting or calligraphy even though you know, I love calligraphy. It's a beautiful art. I'm sure everybody should learn and uh, practice that. But for me, it's about handwriting development. You know, uh, I believe you need to do things the way it's supposed to be done. So starting from, you know, how you select a pen for yourself. There's a science behind this. You know, most of us just pick up the pen because we like it or the brand or the color or the comfortness. But, you know, there's a science. For example, if you're buying your shirt, you buy with a specific measurement, specific material. You're very particular about that. When you buy your shoe, you buy a shoe because it fits you well, it looks good. It, you don't just buy it because it looks good, it also has to fit, it, it has to serve the purpose. Similarly, there's a science behind choosing the right pen and we educate this to children. So we don't talk about handwriting analysis to them, we talk about handwriting development to them. So we talk about handwriting analysis if you're 16 years and above in age, uh, and we talk about handwriting development from six years onwards, that is if you're in first standard onwards, to anybody who is writing competitive exams like IES, IPS, or banking, uh, so that's how it is. So you have that community, a different community or with your that same coaching it's community? It's my sub funnel uh, where I okay. train people how you can also train uh, you know, children. So that's my level uh, four, where I support yeah. people in becoming a master practitioner of graphology, which includes not only handwriting analysis, health and handwriting, handwriting development and graphotherapy. Amazing. So now I'm not like like in one of your posts I, I I could see that where you mentioned handwriting is uh, mind writing. So yes. What was that? Okay, uh, very true to the statement. Your handwriting is not your handwriting. It is actually the brain which is actually writing. So let me show you this. Now everybody raise your hand and if you have to move your hand like this, your brain has to send signals to the hand. To move like this can you see that every part of your body every nerve every muscle is managed by your brain yeah. so the way you write onto the paper using the pen and the paper it's a lot to do with your brain than your hand hand is just a medium right so if only hands were to write have you not seen people who can write with their mouth they write with their toes because they don't have the right arms yes. i've seen personally people who met with an accident people who have lost their hand in a you know in a war uh, I, I have personally worked with a student who got electrocuted while playing on the terrace and he lost his both the hands and he started practicing writing with the foot and he was in 8th standard then 
and he prepared himself to write a 10th standard exam and he cleared it also so what i real you know what is you need what you need to really get present is it is the brain writing it is not the handwriting now the question is imran why do we call it as a handwriting then because majority of the population uses hand as a medium to write that's why it's handwriting but it's actually the brain which is writing that's why we call it mind writing yeah it's actually mind yes mind amazing like uh, like now handwriting is something like uh, that you mentioned about like uh, when it comes to uh, the future of handwriting now this people are going to digital how do you see yourself your contribution towards this industry uh, because everyone just digital paid uh, they are using started using digital notes how you you are going to contribute in that phase Uh, I, I personally love technology, and that's the way forward. You know, I use best of technology. I have the latest Mac. I have the latest phone. Everything. I, I love technology. I'm not somebody who's uh, asking people to let go of technology and come back to writing. No, I personally love technology, and I propagate. You should have the best of technology. Utilize. We are in a golden era of technology, and you should definitely. You deserve des- definitely the best of technology. But what is also important is that let's not forget the fundamentals. Let's not be, uh, forget the basics. and you know remember it's not about number of thoughts you have you know you can give life to your thoughts by writing it so my sincere request is write your thoughts onto the paper yeah you can use a tablet you can write you write on your screen you can use a digital pen but you know the basics the fundamental is more important so use a paper and a pen and you know if you can do that you know things will be you know different for you and it's basically getting an alignment so why do we still do yoga Uh, why are we still you know no matter how much technology is helping us to track our heartbeat you know calories and everything but eventually it is the body which has to do the movement eventually it is the you know mouth who has to manage what you going to eat inside so similarly if you really want to influence the alpha state of your mind go back to writing and if i tell you why i'm so so focused about writing the movement of the finger is more important when you write it especially the index and the thumb So the way you write letters it's not just about writing it's about the way your fingers are moving specifically onto the paper so that's the more important aspect of it so that's how it is it's it's like a developing a habit so like how how do you see the the like whenever somebody is like first learning from you about this and writing analysis about themselves what are the factor that actually changes in their life in their handwriting that actually help them to develop go to the next phase or maybe working on that cell uh very simple uh sagar so you know most of the diseases or health challenges currently the world is experiencing is psychosomatic uh what do you mm. mean by psychosomatic is it is the brain at the mind mind level where the diseases gets and then it comes down to your body so for example if you are newly diagnosed by diabetes the first question the doctor is going to ask you is what are you so stressed about aap itna tension mein kyun hai So the way I propagate writing and handwriting is I say that can you write in a specific manner scientific manner practice graphotherapy and empower your mind to be healthy because my understanding is a healthy mind cannot have a diseased body So I tell people if you want to really work on your mind uh, body start with your mindset allow that to happen So that's the important aspect I talk about and then I talk about be present to what is happening around you observe find out what is your pattern and how you learn things how you decode things how you analyze things so that's how it is so you know like what are the like, some most unusual or surprising things that you have learned about someone through their handwriting anything from your students maybe uh there are many things which i can talk about you know when we look into your handwriting we not only identify your analysis Uh, we don't predict your past or your future by the way uh, we just be present to who you are as a person so when we look into your handwriting we identify some of the things which are very close to you some of your habits some of your you uh, know uh, expression quotient your emotional intensity how you connect with people how you remember certain incidences so i i can go on and surprise people by talking about their sleeping pattern uh, i can talk about uh, how they uh, you know approach love Uh, security in their life, how they approach towards, you know, anything and everything in their life. So I can actually very much surprise you with every single element about you, like something which people know after spending more time with you. I can say that just by looking at one glance of your handwriting. So I don't have to spend years to understand you. Wow, that is like 
we we can see sometimes uh, live your some demonstrations is it Sorry? possible uh, <laughs> yeah uh, i'll definitely share my uh, youtube channel link i i i talk about famous celebrities you know uh, one of the things i follow is uh, you know to become a doctor we study medicine and uh, to become an engineer we study engineering but to become successful it's also important to study successful people so one of the things i do is when i learn handwriting analysis i teach my students my community members i tell them go identify understand people in your life who are successful find out what is there in their handwriting what was there in their behavior what was there in their personality which made them what they are today so we basically do this and so, you know, recently we analyzed uh, you know dr rabindranath tagore's handwriting we talked about uh, you know netaji subhas chandra bose's handwriting we actually talked about albert einstein's handwriting we talked about you know some of the famous personalities indian you know national international so the idea is about you know understanding people understanding their success and then just focusing on that would you like to share any um, like celebrity that you have analyzed their handwriting uh, would yes, like to share um, I I'm not supposed to name them but yes Okay uh, no problem. Yeah because we have uh, you know I normally don't talk about my clients but yes I have worked with celebrities I have worked with sports personalities I have supported them in correcting the signatures uh some of them who were not even big that time I and mean, you know I'm talking about those era and now they have made it very big they were very famous so that's how it is Amazing now uh, I would like to have this curiosity of uh, analyzing a doctor's handwriting Yes. So wh- why uh, they do what? What are they write? Like, okay. how is your perspective uh, around it? Uh, no, uh, Because maximum I, I, doctors, I, I, their handwriting, I cannot read. Oh uh, so, no! I, I tell you something which will surprise you is uh, I have analyzed more than six thousand plus doctors' handwriting. Wow. Okay, wow. I, I was approached by a pharmaceutical company. and the pharmaceutical company wanted uh, you know doctors to get their handwriting analyzed because they all operate with such a huge level of stress yeah. so we started collecting handwritings from different parts of india so we we actually clocked around more than 6000 different handwritings different doctors in different specialties and some of the top doctors and you'll be surprised sagar doctors do write normally they have their own better handwriting also but when they write on the prescription sometimes it is uh, you know it's a professional demand they are little it bit in hurry there are so many things to manage and sometimes they don't remember the name of the product so they basically end up writing the combinations right and sometimes the spelling is a challenge and sometimes you know that's how it is so nothing there's no secret about it god you know, yeah actually <laughs> made it a little big but yeah Uh, but I do. I've I've seen like some good doc. No, some doctors actually have uh, good handwriting. Yeah, they uh, have. Yes, they have. They yeah. can definitely write regularly. Yes, <laughs> possible. <laughs> so possible, exactly. Uh, now, like uh, coming towards a different perspective of this thing, like coming to a different perspective as angle of you are being a coach. Uh, you are like having a. You are mentioning in that one event that we are part of the same community. Ilich, and you are talking about that. Whenever you have some different different levels of your coaching, right? First, uh, this is like what are the levels that you how and how you actually train them, and also well, coming about um, or like talking about that upsell conversions. Your upsell conversion, I think I've never seen such a upsell conversion like that you have. Uh, please please uh, share about that. Okay great. Uh see uh, my my f- focus of sales is very simple. I tell people consider handwriting analysis as a skill. Okay. And anything a- any skill which you learn should have these three dimensions to it. Number 1, it should be self help. I always give example of learning to swim. If you learn to swim, the first benefit is you because you can experience water, you can save yourself from drowning. because you upgraded yourself your new skill the second aspect of any skill is that help others so when you see somebody in trouble when you see somebody is actually need your help you can actually help them because you know how to swim number 3 because you know how to swim because you know how to save people now you can actually tease this and monetize your skill so that's what people have you not seen people who are good singers they teach singing play instruments you can teach so i look at handwriting analysis is also like a skill and when you make people present to it and this is the same focus i have created in my funnel first level understand yourself help yourself 
empower yourself level 2 help others yeah in the process yeah. monetize you know if you don't want to charge people money for analyzing handwriting do it as a form of giving back to the con- you know community giving back to the you know society okay or you do it for free or you charge give back the charity but you have to have a exchange of energy it could be a testimonial in the process it could be about money it could be a blessing but don't just do it for free and this is how i build up the entire funnel so when people get, get into my level 1 so it's very natural they see level 2 is a natural step it's, it's like a effortless selling effortless. so when the people get into my level 2 for them it's all about imran i'm in love with the science i see how it is done and it is taken forward and uh, sagar one of the things i made it easy for people is that i tell them you focus on what you're good at rest of the things we will take care of it. for example if i make you an handwriting analyst i'll tell you focus on the analysis part you want to you know establish your online identity we will take care of that you want a business card to introduce yourself we'll take care of that you need a handout to talk about the services and things like that so you don't worry about the technicalities of it you worry about only how to deliver part of it and that's why i i i remove all these blockages in my level 1 to level 2 transition and that's why i'm able to clock the level of percentage of conversions which i'm doing which sometimes you know averages to about 35 to 40 percent on every upsell amazing uh, so what was the uh, the level 3 then like after level 2 level 3 is about understanding handwriting analysis much more on a deeper level imagine you look at somebody's handwriting and you can find out what are the challenges in terms of health that person is experiencing how you can go deeper into identifying on the you know mind level treating the disease which people are actually you know experiencing like i have people who have you know identified unexplained pains for example uh, i have seen a lot of people go to doctors they say i have doctor i have this pain in this particular part of my body doctors and you know make them undergo all the reports all the tests but only to find out everything is normal but the patient is still not been content because they say doctor i still have that pain so it's unexplained pain so i have seen people learning health and handwriting and fixing fixing that part of their life i have seen people fixing their thyroid issues migraine issues people who are fixing their you know breathing challenges you know what because sometimes it's all about the mental you know impact which we have to fix that and it happens there so what we study is how your behavior influences your mind and how your mind creates diseases amazing i think you have also on the other side of it so we work on the other side so for me i don't look at migraine i look at what triggers you migraine so we identify the situation root sense, cause yeah. the root cause of it not just on the surface level of it so for example let me give you an uh, example of a girl who was in her high school and every time you know she was really really you know impacted by migraine as a pain and every time there was a time to go to the school in the morning she used to get this attack and sometimes she had to miss the school sometimes she had to skip the school and she was irregular not able to pay attention to the thing so can you see that how only when going to the school the migraine is to get triggered and then we did i identification of it we identify the root cause and she realized and we you know we all got present to it that she got bullied in the school and that's why she was looking for reasons not to you know go to the schools and she was causing this for herself so her migraine was true to the uh, problem but what was actually triggering it was the the pressure the uh, the in- impact the emotion that you have to go and face those and the bullies in the school and uh, and not only this i have seen people who don't want to be in, uh, in front of people and all this gets impacted yes i think this is a very uh, sequential process of getting to the next level yes and uh, when it comes to like i i teach this thing is building online communities like how do you believe like building community for a coach for a online marketing is very much important like how you implement that for your community and how it help help you uh true uh, community is the way forward this is your family this is your extended family and uh, you need to start you know focusing on it and i i i learned this from mitesh ji you know you need to be highly focused on how you can add value to your community on a regular basis and one of the reasons why you need to keep your community active is see let's accept this the people in our community are always looking at upgrading themselves and they're always in search of upgrading themselves they're always looking at how they can get a better version of who you are 
सो दे आर कॉन्स्टेंटली लुकिंग फॉर इफ सागर इज गुड एट समथिंग सागर से बेहतर कोई तो होगा तो उनके बारे में वो सोचते रहते हैं सो दे आर कॉन्स्टेंटली लुकिंग एट हाउ आई कैन अपग्रेड माई सेल्फ अब हाउ आई कैन अपग्रेड बियॉन्ड द वॉट आई नो फ्रॉम दिस टीचर हाउ कैन लर्न मोर थिंग्स सो यू नीड टू अप योर गेम if you want your community to be intact if you want your community to grow within your community itself then you need to show up you need to do what is required to done you need to upgrade yourself you need to give the people what they really need and how you need to upgrade your own self so that your community are intact and that's how the community grows because they know agar mai imran se jud gaya ya mai sagar se jud gaya i don't have to go anywhere else Exactly. Right. So now, now what Sagar is doing is Sagar is bringing the best of people and saying that you learn from this person. Maybe there's some one thing which this person can you know teach you from this interview. So you bring guest speakers, you bring the experts, you you have a expert series which is going on, and you feel safe because you're not just because information is available on the planet Earth in in abundance, in, it's for free. Yes. But verified information. workable doable information and that's the only a trainer can do it so when one trainer introduces another trainer into the community you need to be rest assured the community should feel that okay sagar verifies people he knows what is good for us so when sagar says this program is better people will take your word for you know seriously so yes yeah that's how it works so that's how i my community is so intact so in alignment so we are so uh, you know it's a close knit family you know because we have the trust we have that thing and i i also have my community members who come and ask me imran i want to do this program what are your views on this so can you see that they actually verified yes. they are not people who verified. are scared to ask me can i go do that program you know my I, i'm not i'm not going to make my community feel that ne sab cheez main hi sikhaunga aapko mere paas hi sikhna hai no be at least be uh, in a create that space people can at least come and ask you Where can I do this? Can I upgrade to this level? Uh, you know, can I go and learn that? Do I need this in my life? So that's the level of conversation we have in our community. Wow! It's like the whenever we want to take any decisions, we take a, a suggestion from our whether it's parents or someone we we trust. Yes, I think that happens in inside the community. Yeah, the and trust how, is inside the community. Yes. How do how do you like you mention like how Mitesh is actually showing up every single day for uh, his community? So how do you also? do that like is it some facilitator does that or do you go on live every day uh, truly uh, I, i do every week uh, one inner circle i connect with people uh, we have uh, whatsapp groups of specific levels so uh, it's uh, driven by the community for the community and i have my level 4 participants who are my uh, master practitioners who are my andradic facilitators who are my uh, partners in transformation they actually drive the entire community so when you join my level 1 you will meet my level 4 participant supporting you in completing your level 1 and they are with you yeah. until you complete the curriculum with me and all my facilitators do this with a pure commitment of giving back to the community it's not the money as a motivation but what i uh, feel more content about is that when people are acknowledging they're thanking my facilitator's names comes first then second is my name and i thought you know that's a blessing because and if i can create somebody who is able to add value to you so it's not just about me being a hero can you create more heroes in your life so that's the idea there wow light bulb moment for me thank you so much uh, imran uh like uh, when it comes to like you also mentioned about new crazy you uh, you did a good collaboration with them like yeah. but so there are a lot of people uh actually looking to do the, this collaborative collaborations so what are the thing that you, you should look at when it comes to collaboration see uh, uh let me answer this you know if you ask me imran uh, what made you collaborate with mitesh ji and indu ji uh yes say my collaboration with them is divine you know it was bound to happen and when we connected we connected on that level on a spiritual on a divine level so it's not just the money which makes people collaborate i want to tell this very very clearly uh money is a by product of your collaboration what is the most important thing about collaboration is that your value system should be in alignment with the another person who you're collaborating with number 1 number 2 your funnel should be seamlessly possibly to sync with the another person's funnel you cannot have two extreme products or you cannot have similar products and bring it now you need to have a you know product you need to have a funnel which is complementing Compliment. each other mm-hmm. right and now when we have mitesh ji and indu ji they are you know us awesome they are internationally renowned you know law of attraction coaches so they propagate mindset game they talk about frequency they talk about energy 
So I'm actually asking the same thing. I'm asking people to enhance the frequency using the power of Android analysis. So can you see that how it's in sync? So your decision of collaborating should not be based on money, not based on who is having bigger uh, you know, community or who is better earner. No, it's not that. It's about what is that value I can add to their community and what is that they can add to my community. And in the process, yeah, a lot of money as a byproduct. But what is important is that our commitment towards our community should be safeguarded, right? They should feel, yeah, uh, when I connected, you know, when Imran introduced, when, you know, Miteji introduces me, so, not, you know, uh, I, I tell you this, you can do it in two ways, short term, long term. Short term is I go, I talk, I generate say, revenue and I share it done. with you. Done. What is the long term? Your long term plan should be about how you see yourself working with them one year down the line, two years down the line, how your funnels can grow with each other. So uh, I, I look at that way. I'm not saying short terms are not good. Uh, it, it all depends upon your mindset. It all depends upon your value system. So I, I want you to look at it in, from that perspective. Yes. Very rightly said, Imran. Like, thank you for enlightening us towards that because that is the next stage of any any coaches or some firm we need to grow. And the writing that you also mentioned, it should be complement to each other rather than just as two extreme. Yes. Uh, like, out of uh, like the last closing statement, I would like to learn what are the most important lessons that you have learned during your uh, career as a penmanship influencer? Or the one big lesson that actually. Uh, I'd like to share. Very, very simple. I can tell you this in one sentence. The power to change your life is inside of you, not outside of you. So if you can get present to the power which is inside of you, you know, abundance is going to open up for you. So start seeking inside, not outside of you. Because when I say, you know, simple example is we keep looking, okay, what is funnel in kya hai. You know, what is that he is doing as a strategy? You know, don't look for outside, no, look for inside. Yes. What is that which you need to fix here? What is that which mm. you need to fix here? What is that which you need to fix here? And people are able to see that and they buy from you effortlessly. So that's the idea. Amazing. Uh, now, like the, I would like to know like how there are a lot of people in our community, they want to learn more from you, like how they also can analyze themselves through your handwriting skills. So how they can actually may you have some gifts to share you mentioned uh, like so how they can learn so i can also share the link in the description i invite you all to attend my 90 minutes of a webinar which is free and in this 90 minutes the specific outcomes of four number one you will get to know more than 10 things you can look into anybody's signature and handwriting just by looking at the signature 10 different things and i'll teach you this in the webinar number two I'll also talk about your thinking pattern. Let's find out what is your decision making process. I will discuss this in the webinar. Number three, I'm going to talk about graphotherapy. How does it work? How changing one letter can actually change somebody's life? You know, what is the science behind this? You'll get present to that. And number four, you'll get an opportunity to join my community, how you can become a handwriting analyst by just spending one weekend with me. And I'll empower you in such a way that even before the program gets over, you will be ready as a handwriting analyst. So please do connect with me in a 90 minutes webinar. The link will be below. And uh, I look forward to serve you. I look forward to share with you what changed my life, what changed my community's life, and what could be the way of life for many more people coming in the future. Thank you so much, Imran. And thank you so much, everyone, for uh, joining here specific for this watching this interview uh, those who are uh, watching this interview please uh, like share what is your biggest lesson that you learned i know this this one i think almost one hour conversation case uh, literally give you some valuable information about it you can share and in the, in the comment box and thank you so much imran i'm super grateful for this valuable time i'm super that uh, you have literally added a lot of value i know that this is 15 minutes to two minutes it's, it has a feel with like a lot of values. Thank you. Pleasure is mine. Thank you, Sagar, for being there. And uh, yes, I look forward to read your comments. Do share with you, uh, share with us what is the biggest takeaway for you out of this conversation. And thank you for taking some time and watching this patiently. And I'm glad I was here. And uh, even if you could take back one thing from my conversation and add it in your community and your funnel, I think things will be great. Okay. So thank you once again. Uh, thanks, Sagar. Uh, you're doing an amazing work. 
I really appreciate the way you have taken on, you know, bringing the best people uh, around, uh, you know, in the ecosystem of digital world, how they are doing it, and also giving a little bit of insight into our world to your community, so that they have a benchmark to reach, they have a, you know, exactly. milestone to achieve, and that's a way, a huge way of inspiring each other. So thank you, thank you for taking this initiative. Thank you, Abraham. Thank you, everybody.